Hi everyone, this is DK. As promised, I'll be going over the popularity of Snapchat and the specific features that led to the popularity. But before we move on to the main dish, let's do a simple review on the news related to social media. Facebook recently announced that its users watch 8 billion videos per day. According to Fortune.com, this drastic increase could be due to a feature called autoplay. Due to this feature, a video on a user's newsfeed would play automatically without them even clicking. Because of autoplay and Facebook's policy in counting a view that's more than 3 seconds, you might not even be watching a video on your newsfeed. But according to Facebook, you watched that video that you did not watch and you weren't influenced. There has been criticisms about this statistic. According to a YouTube channel in a nutshell, Facebook is cheating. Because they're stealing videos from YouTube and the 8 billion video views are not leading to engagement. In fact, the audience retention rate of Facebook videos at 30 seconds is 21%, way lower than the 86% of YouTube. So although this number is very impressive and is probably going to increase their revenue from advertisement, it might not represent the true user interactions that people get. On another note, Facebook announced its own news app. With this application, you don't have to download New York Times, The Guardian, BBC, or any other news app, but just have the Facebook app. This raises the question, is Facebook becoming an everything book. A video giant, a news giant, and an everything giant? The question continues. Let's move on to our main dish, Snapchat. According to a study by Sumto, 77% of college students use Snapchat at least once a day, and 33% of that usage is focused on creativity. According to ExpandedRamblings.com, there are 100 million daily active users on Snapchat, and Snapchat's 2015 projected revenue is $15 million, 15 times higher than their revenue in 2014. It is also known that they have 6 billion video views per day, which is less than Facebook, but probably more effective. So with these amazing stats, we ask, why do we snap all the time? In this video, I'll be focusing on three key features, snap, story, and revenue generation. Snapchat was very successful because it coped with one of the most important features that people were thinking about. What if other people see all my previous social media posts? Snapchat brought fresh air into the industry, by introducing instant communication. A typical snap includes a photo and a message. After the snap is delivered, the recipient could open it, read it, and it would almost immediately disappear. This is important in that the user is voluntarily clicking on the actual message to read the snap and is focusing on the information. So three seconds might be enough to consider it as a view. As this feature became more important and Snapchat drew more attention, they introduced a new feature, Snap Story. This was a revolutionary change because it delivers information in a hierarchical order. Whereas Facebook and Twitter puts the latest post on the top of your notification line, Snapchat user is able to build a story from the beginning of the day to the end. So a viewer would see the beginning of the story to the end of the story, whereas for Facebook and Twitter, they would see it in a reverse from end to beginning. Moreover, if someone were to be traveling to different places, a user could use geo filters to mark where he or she was, adding another element to the form of instant communication and the change in time. So everything about Snapchat is specific and is relevant to the story that the user is trying to deliver. Now then, how does Snapchat generate revenue? There are three main sources, Discover, Live Stories, and New Lenses. Discover is a feature which allows its partner firms such as Vice, ESPN, and CNN to post snaps that are relevant to these firms, therefore advertising their own firm. These firms are also able to advertise other firms with the spaces that they get from Snapchat. According to Recode.net, these ads are sold 10 cents per view. So if there were 1 million views per day, that would mean that there would be $100,000 of revenue per day to split between the partner publishers and Snapchat. Another source of revenue generation is live stories, which gathers snaps from events such as Coachella and forms a story out of it. So wherever viewers are, they could feel as if they're at an actual event. According to Business Insider, Snapchat is known to charge 2 cents per view for a 10 second ad. Meaning that if there are 20 million views for an event, it would raise $400,000 of revenue for that 10 second ad. The final source of revenue is lens filters. The newly introduced feature recognizes the facial movements of the actual user and apply cool effects onto it. Although there are filters that people could use for free, most of the lens filters are charged 99 cents per the lens and people could buy it and use it forever. Because of these features that maintain 100 million daily active users of Snapchat, the usage of Snapchat is expanding to fields such as education and arts. For example, Los Angeles County Museum of Arts, also known as LACMA, is known to be one of the most active users of Snapchat in the field. Taking advantage of the application's popularity among young audiences, the museum has engaged with people all over the United States. Again, this was done with a creative use of Snapchat. Furthermore, universities such as Duke University and University of Kansas 
have implemented Snapchat to interact with the audiences that they have on social media, which includes students, parents, campus community, and prospective students. As Snapchat becomes used by more and more businesses, we start to wonder, is Snapchat just a messaging application that people could use for social purposes? Or can it be used in other purposes, such as educational context that increases the interaction between students and teachers? The question continues. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you really liked the video or didn't really like it, but still want to support me in any kind of way, please like and comment on my videos on Facebook and YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe on the YouTube channel to see more videos. Thank you.